In this video, we are going to talk about a new study that just came out talking about the two main types of omega-3s that you get from fish oil that you want and the difference between these two, EPA and DHA, in terms of inflammation. A lot of times these are taken together and we know what they do together by the many fish oil studies, but this one's talking about what does each one do on its own and then what are the benefits should you take one more than the other or take them both um, which are the benefits of each and it's a new study it's a good one uh, so we're going to get into the details here the actual study details the link I will put it in the description of the video if you want to get more info but we're going to go over most of it right here Okay, so the type of study that it is, is it's an interesting one. It's a crossover study. And if you don't know what that is or you forget, it, it means that you divide the people, the participants, into two different groups. And both groups randomly get each of whatever you're doing. So in this case, both groups will get the EPA. Both groups get the DHA but you don't tell them who's getting what and when. You just sort of for half the time, group A gets DHA and group B gets EPA and then you switch it later. So it's not you're comparing some group taking one thing to another group taking another thing. Both groups get both and they switch it randomly and it's also double blind, meaning they don't know which ones they don't know which one they're getting and the researchers don't know either but everybody is getting all of it so that's the crossover design and it makes it so that you don't need as many people in it in order to uh, figure out clearly what the results are saying okay so the study had 21 people in it it was 12 women and nine men in the crossover study they divided them into two groups randomly and they were between the ages of 50 and 75 and they were diagnosed with chronic inflammation so basically when they diagnose people with that they look at your blood work um, there's usually some physical markers with that but when you're looking in blood there are several different types of proteins like C-reactive protein, interleukin-6. Uh, there's several different ones, but they, they look at a number. And, and in the description, I'll put which ones they're looking at in the link. But they look at these blood markers of inflammation. And if you're high in these pro-inflammatory proteins, then you have a lot of inflammation and all the health concerns you're worried about can go along with that. And if you have low amounts of these markers then you know that's better on average and they started the study actually with a four-week lead-in period so for the first four weeks of the study they gave everybody uh, they gave everybody some sunflower oil which it, it has no omega-3s at all and they did that just to get a baseline reading for everybody. So they were all taking the sunflower oil with no omega-3s and then they could see how much inflammation was in each of the participants. And that's why they did that. And then the duration of the study was three more 10-week periods. So group A would get 10 weeks of uh, DHA, group B would get 10 weeks of EPA and then they did a 10 week washout in the middle to sort of let the results or get it out of their system so to speak so that it didn't matter which order they were doing it in and then they did another a third 10 week period where group A got you know EPA when they would have had DHA and vice versa in the second one and the dose was a pretty high dose it's actually higher than a lot of the governmental bodies recommend some a lot of doctors do recommend this type of a dose but it's interesting it's on the higher side they were giving three grams per day of dha or epa in the study and now we get to the results which i think are interesting 
uh, DHA reduced four different pro-inflammatory proteins and EPA only reduced one of these inflammatory proteins in the blood. And DHA also lowered white blood cell secretion in three of the pro-inflammatory proteins versus just one for EPA. So it sounds like on the surface that DHA is a lot better, but if you look at EPA, and this is actually uh, a very important one, it improved the balance or the ratio of pro and anti-inflammatory proteins. And that's one of the biggest uh, reasons that you take omega-3s is you want to balance your pro and anti-inflammatory um, proteins in your blood. You do want some pro-inflammatory proteins. It's part of it's part of being a healthy human. Just generally, we have too much chronic inflammation. That's just sort of the typical state of humans in modern society. So to get that into balance has a lot of health benefits that go along with it. And I have a couple of quotes from scientists who actually worked on the studies. All right, we have a couple of quotes here from the scientists that worked on the study, and I think both of these are interesting, so I'll just quote them here. In our bodies, there is always this balance between pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory proteins, and we found that EPA was better than DHA at enhancing that balance. For the prevention of cardiovascular disease, previous research tells us that balance is very important. So the more you look at this, the more you'll realize there are a lot of health benefits to having that balance um, in the right balance. So that is a huge benefit of EPA there. And this one says, the jury has been out, so to speak, on how the two major components of fish oil work and whether one might be better than the other. These results suggest that DHA is the more powerful of the two on markers of inflammation in the body, but that's not the end of the story. And of course, the end of the story that they're talking about is how effective EPA was or is actually at uh, making the ratio of the pro and anti-inflammatory markers in the right balance. So really you want to have both. One thing that I noticed in the study, I didn't see them talk about something that we like to talk about a lot when we're looking at our fish oil. I'm, I'll put a link to the previous video if you didn't see it on how to choose a really good quality fish oil, but they weren't talking about the form that the fish oil was in. Like was it a triglyceride form, which is what you want versus ethyl ester. And my assumption is that if it was in triglyceride form that these because it absorbs better that these results may be even more profound than study suggests so something to think about there um so at 88 herbs we you know we took a very long time to decide on which fish oil to release, and this is very high in EPA and DHA both. It's a concentrated fish oil from Iceland. It has no mercury at all, no heavy metals. Everything's been extracted, and the anchovies that we get it from in the first place are extremely clean. We mix it with natural lemon oil, and it is in the triglyceride form. There's a whole other video on that that you should check out, but this is the high absorption form where it, the, bio avail, the bio availability is far superior. And you can check out the rest of our supplements uh, because we are ingredient experts. This is the stuff that we pride ourselves on, not just looking into the research that we like to share but also the unique features of each different ingredient and why some of seemingly the same thing are better than others. So what makes one type of ashwagandha better than another? What makes one fish oil better than another? What makes one magnesium 
better than another and we go over those details as well and every product that we make we put the absolute best into each one so i think you'll really enjoy and notice the difference of these particular products as well so hope you enjoyed that video please like and subscribe if you did leave a comment below and i'll get back to you on that and we'll talk to you very soon in the next video